In this video, I'm going to give you an exercise which you can try if you want. The exercise is to write a function that calculates and returns the factorial of a number. So what is the factorial of a number? Well, the factorial of a number, this is something that only applies to positive integers. So we're only going to be passing positive whole numbers to the function that we write. And the mathematical definition of it goes something like this. Let me explain this. Firstly, we would read this as n factorial. So let's say n is 3. We write 3 factorial like this. We just put an exclamation mark after the whole positive number. And we read that as 3 factorial or 5 factorial or whatever the number is. And the definition of the factorial of a number is that it's the number multiplied successively by all the numbers that are one less than the current number. So for example, 3 factorial is defined as being equal to 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 4 factorial will be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I think you get the idea, right? Now there is a bit of a twist, which is the factorial of zero, which you might expect to be zero, is actually defined as being equal to one. So your function is going to have to take that into account. So you need to write a function, which you could call factorial, and you want to be able to pass a whole integer positive number to that function, and it will return the factorial of that number. And then use your function to calculate the factorial of 7. Now, since this is quite a difficult problem at this stage, I'm going to give you a hint about how to do this. I would recommend using a loop. This is not the only way to do this, but that's what I would recommend at this stage. And you're going to want to create a variable, so declare a variable before the loop starts. And then the loop needs to repeatedly modify the number that that variable refers to. So I think even with the hint, it's a bit of a tricky exercise, but I would recommend having a go. Make sure you understand the definition of factorial. Hopefully it's pretty clear. And then see how far you can get with writing a function that calculates and returns the factorial of a number. You're going to want to have practiced defining functions with parameters and returning values from functions before you attempt this, for sure. And if you find you get stuck and you just feel you can't do it, don't worry, because we're going to look at a possible solution in the next video. But I strongly recommend at least doing as much as you can of this exercise before going on to the next video. So try to do as much of this as you can. Maybe you'll get the solution in the end, or maybe you won't, but have a go at it. And I just want to give you a quick justification for why this factorial thing even exists. The factorial of a number is actually the number of ways you can arrange that number of objects. And when I say object, I mean object in the ordinary, everyday sense of the word. So for example, supposing we have three letters, A, B, and C, how many different ways can you arrange those letters? Well, we can arrange them like this, A, B, C. We could have A, C, B. We could have BAC or BCA, and we could have CAB and CBA. That's all the different number of ways I can arrange these letters. There are six different ways. And notice that 3 factorial is 6. So the factorial of a number actually gives us the number of different ways we could arrange that number of objects. And that kind of explains why 0 factorial is defined as 1. Because how many different ways can you arrange nothing? Arguably, there's only one way to arrange nothing. You could quibble about that, but that's kind of justification for it. Have a go and see where you get. And remember that the important thing at this stage is just to be practicing and trying to do things. If you don't get it in the end, don't tear your hair out. We'll look at it in the next video. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. 
I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.